Please rise as the light of Christ enters the sanctuary. Uh, right after church today, you got it. 
Uh, let's say prayer meeting Wednesday, 8 a.m. Uh, come on in here any Wednesday at 8. Meet with us two doors down the hall right there. Um, everybody's invited. Choir, 7 p.m. choir practice, 7.30 p.m. time. Yep, yep. Come on, everybody's invited to that. Do you have to have incredible talent and a beautiful voice? Clearly not, because I'm here. Clearly not. <laughs> Clearly not, she says. So, yeah, no kidding. And if, uh, if you'd like to, though, come. Uh, it's a cool group, and you'd be blessed to be a part of it. Uh, meal for the JV football team. Once again, we have everything we need. We just like people. Uh, so we're serving on the 13th after school, but the 12th at 6? Six. 6. In the Family Life Center. So if you'd like to help put the food together, if you'd like to just come out and have a good time, uh, Wednesday the 12th, 6 p.m., meet us at the Family Life Center and we'll all put that stuff together. Uh, baked spaghetti, uh, etc. How about that? Uh, and we'll put that together on Wednesday night. And then if you're interested in serving, we'll serve it Thursday after school. Uh, foundation Sunday School class today. Today, starting a new unit, in the beginning, God. Bam. So there you yeah. go. Right on. In the beginning, God. So if you're, if you're curious, if you've been coming, there you go. Foundation Sunday School class after church today. Uh, I think Donna is probably in the in the nursery. So if anybody needs uh, to go to the nursery, take a kid to the nursery, uh, right down the hall. Any other announcements? Well, just a reminder of the uh, prayer cards. To make you have one. You had one. Right on. That should be in your pew prayer card, and we'll pray for those on Wednesday morning and throughout the week. If you've got a prayer request. Uh, let's see. Also, hey, if you would be interested in being a communion steward, all right? So that's a that steward. That's fancy, right? But if you, if you'd like to help out with communion once a month, uh, if you'd like to help get the bread and the uh, the grape juice and such throughout the week and help set up in the morning, give me a shout. We we would love to have a little extra help on that. Uh, so, uh, and if you're interested in serving communion, shout it. Um, but we would love to have a little extra help in all of that. So if that's something on your heart, something you feel like you can be a part of, then uh, then then give me a shout, and we'd love to have you a part of that. Any other announcements? October fifteenth, youth is going to Percy Valley Spooky Woods. Yeah. Uh, we're leaving here at uh, six. Sorry. I got overturned. October fifteenth, Spooky Woods on a trip. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Alright. Anything else? Alright. Uh, so, the important business of prayer. Uh, testimonies. If uh, Does anybody have any prayer requests this morning? Or just a testimony about God's been good to you and you want to share that. Either way, uh, what can we pray for? What can we celebrate this morning? Wes, um, dad's surgery went well. <clears throat> um, they were able to um, uh, make all the connections correctly. I, I, it'll take forever to explain what they did. But anyways, um, they did find a little infection when they went in. So he, um, they put a pick line in and we're hoping that um, he's going to get to come home today. Home health. They're trying to line home health up to come out and do the antibiotics. Got so, it. But it, we didn't know, we didn't, I don't, I say we didn't, I didn't realize what a complex surgery it was going to be, and I don't think they knew how nervous the doctor was about it. I mean, he's um, an awesome, awesome doctor, and, um, but he was, uh, you know, afterwards, they were like, oh, it went way better than he thought that it would be. It <laughs> would, and we were like, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, right on. Right on. Yeah, so. Those are always good things to hear afterward, also. I'm, yeah. I'm glad I didn't hear that before. <laughs> but, you know, he just had, he, I, I think he just, um, he hadn't performed that type of surgery as much as the other stuff. So, that's still pretty sore, and 
Of course, he's like chomping at the bit to get out of there. What? You know, like he rolled his eyes right away when we get him up to the room. He's like coming out, waking up a little bit. And the nurse asked him his pain level and he rolled his eyes. I was like, oh, Lord. I was like, I don't know what's going to come out of his mouth, but. We'll pray for the nurses yeah. also. <laughs> but he did, he did, he's doing, he's, you know, I think some pain, but he's, um, overall, it's such a blessing. So. Right on. That's awesome, man. Well, praise God yes. and the chance to come home today. That's yes, awesome. We hope. We'll be praying for continued healing on that. For sure. Yes. That That's is. awesome. Thanks. I, I had a call from Joe and Day yesterday, and she asked the church to put her name on the prayer list. Yes, ma'am. She's very sick. Yes, ma And who was it, Miss Joe and Day. Joe and Day. She used to be a. Uh, come here to church all the time. Got it. We'll pray for her today. Yes, yes ma'am. And throughout the week. Joanne Day. Yes. Who else? Chad Blackwelder. Got it. Chad Blackwelder. Mom. You say your mom? Yeah. And okay to share there. So Miss Nellie's at the um, Davy Nursing and Rehab Center. Yep. And uh, so recovering from her fall, and uh, we would just ask prayers for the family and for Miss Nellie on that. Yep. And she would appreciate visitors at Davy Nursing. Not a whole bunch at one time. It's very detrimental. Gotcha. So just a few at a time. So if, you, if you're kind enough to show up and there's a room full, maybe come back another time. And we do not ask her questions because a lot of times she doesn't know where she's at. And really confused. So just let her do the talking. Got it. We're really taking you in and out. Yes, ma'am. Who else? Our little Aaron has finally been to daycare two weeks. Man, that's great. I, I mean, spike temperature not great, but back to back in in general population, that's a good thing. She had, she had a right, we'll continue to pray for Era. She's still having um, her blood checked and a few days, and she has a right on. We'll take it. Great. Thanks for sharing, Dan. And then we have... I don't say things about that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And we are going to continue praying for Dean and lifting him up every day. Who else? Priscilla Wiggins. Priscilla Wiggins. Patsy Harris. My cousin, Patsy Harris. Patsy Harris. Who else? Well, Joyce Bruce is feeling pretty rough, and uh, she could use some prayer. Um, so just just sick, and her back still giving her trouble. So let's pray for Joyce. Anybody else? Um, uh, Steve, like he yes. hasn't been feeling well the past two days. So. Steve. We'll pray for Steve for sure. Who else? All right. So, so you know, I mean, prayer is special, right? We, we get to come and we get to talk to God, we get to listen to God, we get to lift up needs of our friends and our family. And you don't ever have to feel guilty about lifting up needs of your friends and your family. You don't ever have to feel guilty about Coming to God with, with what's on your heart because he says to come to him, right? So we're going to come to him and ask him to help our friends and our family and trust in his will. And for the things that went unsaid today, we're going to lay those before him and we're going to praise him for who he is. He's good. Somebody said this week, man, the, the list on that uh, email, the prayer list is getting longer and longer. And, and it is right now. This is just a time where some stuff's happening in our church. And so we are called as a family to do see, to, to stand in the gap for our friends and our family and lift them up. So that's what we're going to do this morning. All right. We're going to pray for them. 
and we're going to pray for everything going on, and we're going to pray that God will just bless us today and throughout the week and use us today and throughout the week. So let's pray about that, okay? Heavenly Father, we come before you today, and, and Lord, we would just ask that you would be in this place with us. We would ask that your Holy Spirit would just come and touch us and hold us. Lord, we have people dear to us that are hurting and have just been through the ringer lately. And Lord, we know we live in a broken world. We know we, we live in a broken place. We know that while we're here, because of sin, sickness exists and disease exists and brokenness exists. And we know it's not always going to be that way. We need you to help us through it right here and right now as we walk through each day. Lord, as our bodies get tired and our minds get consumed and wander, we need you. Lord, for each person that we, we lifted up in this place today, we need you to reach down and to heal To reach and give comfort, to hold tight and assure and give your peace. Lord, we need you. Father, we praise you for times that are good and times that are bad. Lord, we praise you for times that are good for obvious reasons, God. We just we need the relief. We need to just have a mountaintop experience to see you and be filled up with you. God, we also praise you for times that are tough because often it's in those times that we see you more clearly than we did when it wasn't. And so, God, we hold fast to you, knowing that all along you're holding tight to us. Lord, for the things that went unsaid this morning that are just weighing down on hearts, we lay before you. You are good and holy and powerful and beautiful and you care about us. And so we trust in you. Jesus, we need you. Lord, we come together as a family and we lift up our needs and we praise you because you are mighty and you are awesome and we pray together. We pray together the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, saints, let's continue to worship God and let's stand and sing Standing on the Promises 374 in your hymnal or on the screen. So Standing on the Promises, let's stand and sing together.
uh, I'm a sports nut, right? Un unhelpfully. Unhelpfully a sports nut, right? And so I get emotional, and, and Jack wore a stinking Clemson shirt today. Thanks a lot, Jack. Uh, but, but listen, so I, I get a little emotional about that. You know, we, we ought to get emotional about Christ, right? That, that just ought to happen. That, that ought to be the thing that drives our hearts, right? So here's what we're going to do, all right? We can get a little rowdy this morning. Here's what we're going to do. I'll, I'll, it's going to be a little weird, right? But, but I, want you, I want you to start clapping, right? I want you to start clapping and give a little woo, right? Because we're going we're gonna to praise God. But that's a clap. That's, that's an offering to God, right? So, so let's give it to God right here. That's his fault. All right? Hey, let's continue to worship God with our tithes and with our offerings today. Mm. Heavenly Father, you are good to us, and we praise you, and we thank you because you are mighty and you are powerful. We trust you with the gifts that we give you now that you'll use them for your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Joppa praying, and I saw a visionary say, 
an object that resembled a large sheet coming down, being lowered by its four corners from heaven, and it came to me. And when I looked closely and I considered it, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, the wild beasts, the reptiles, and the birds of the sky. And then I also heard a voice telling me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. No, Lord, I said, for nothing common or ritually unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a voice answered from heaven a second time. What God has made clean, you must not call common. Now this happened three times. And then everything was drawn up again into heaven. And at that very moment, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. And then the Spirit told me to accompany them with no doubts at all. And these six brothers accompanied me and we went into the man's house. And he reported to us, he, Cornelius, reported to us he had seen the angel standing in his house and praying, send to Joppa and call for Simon, who is also named Peter. He will speak a message to you that you and your household will be saved by. Verse 15, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came down on them just as on us at the beginning. And then I remembered the word of the Lord. He said, Jesus said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, if God gave them the same gift that he also gave to us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, how can I possibly hinder God? Last verse. When they heard this, they became silent. And then they glorified God. Saying, so God has granted repentance resulting in life even to the Gentiles. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
repeat of what we just read, right? So we have Acts chapter 10. Uh, Peter sees a vision. Cornelius sees an angel. They both meet up. I remember that from last week, and, and hopefully you were reading that through again this week. And so you have this whole narr narration there in Acts chapter 10. And then in Acts chapter 11, the author here, Luke, takes the time to repeat the whole thing. What, why would he do that? Hey, listen, and because it's so important. So, so at that time, at the time that this, this letter was being written, um, you had a certain amount of space, you had a certain amount of room there, and so a scroll would be about 35 feet of papyrus and, 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 or, or what have you, and you would sew that together or you would piece that together, and, and you had a, a certain amount of room or you had to start another scroll, right? And so, so you have this moment where back-to-back -back instances, Luke repeats the same thing. And you say, well, why would he do that? Why on earth would he take the time to repeat what just happened in chapter 10, repeat chapter 11? Because it's that important. Because it's that important that God would open up the doors for Gentiles, for non-believers, right? And, and remember, this is such a big deal. At the end of chapter 10, verse 48, check this out. At the end of 10, 48, Peter stayed with Cornelius. Cornelius and his family were baptized. The Holy Spirit came on them. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked him to stay for a few days. That's the last words of chapter 10. So Peter stays with Cornelius. Now then we pick up in 11. And it says, the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had welcomed God's message also. And when Peter went up to Jerusalem, those who stressed circumcision argued with him. In other words, the news of what happened in chapter 10 arrived back home before Peter arrived back home. And so they were waiting to ambush him. And why was this a big deal? Because like we talked about briefly last week, the Jewish people, God's, God's children, were told to alienate themselves, to isolate themselves from non-Jewish people. And to the point where they wouldn't eat with them, they wouldn't drink with them. And even if they had been through a Gentile region and picked up dust on their sandals, they would kick it off their sandals, remove the dust from their feet. It's where that saying came from. You see that? Uh, in the gospel, you see Jesus said, kick the dust off your feet. It was a saying because if they walked through Gentile land and got Gentile dirt on their feet, they would kick the dust off their feet before they went in their house. And they would remove that dirt because it was Gentile dirt. And they didn't even want, not only did they not want Gentile people in their house, and Gentiles were non-Jewish people, right? So non-chosen. Not only did they not want the people in their house, they didn't want the people's dirt in their hats. And so Peter's still there. And Peter has stayed. And he's been eating with folks. And he's been drinking with folks. And he probably has their dirt <laughs> on his feet. And he's baptized them into this family of believers. This is a big deal. It's scandalous. And before Peter gets back to tell everybody, the news already reached him. Now, I grew up in a small town. Most of you grew up in a small town. Has the news ever beat you home? Right? I, we were talking to some friends yesterday. And, and I can remember vividly, I can remember vividly, 16 years old and, uh, and driving down the road with, with a new driver's license and maybe, maybe pushing it a little as far as the speed limit is concerned. Right, and I remember growing up in Davidson County and, and coming around Hemstetler Road had a curve that you could have a little Mitsubishi Mighty Max pickup truck and you could kind of hang it on the curve. And I remember hanging it on the curve and, and you could get the tires to bark just a little around the curve. Right? And, and I remember that, thinking how cool that was. And I remember getting home one day and just going about my business and my dad coming home and the first words out of his mouth were, heard you were going a little fast on Hemstetler Road today. What the, how the heck do you know that? Right? And then, then a week later, I'd run off the road on him, step the road, and, and spun out. But no damage was done to the vehicle, so I got back on the road, came back home, washed the truck, got everything removed. When Dad got home, he said, heard you going a little fast on him, step the road again. 
Give me the keys because you won't be on him step the road for a week. You'll be riding with him. Well, I was a moron then. I'm, I'm a slight moron now. I was a big moron then. And, and we got, I was, like, I was like, how does he know that? Said, well, half our family lived on him step the road. So they knew what our truck looked like and they would call. And they'd say, well, anyway, we're moving a little fast on him step the road. But the word beat me home. And so it was like an ambush waiting for me. The truth was like an ambush waiting for me. And what's happened to Peter, and I bet this has happened to you, whether it's in school or if you're a student, and Lord knows news travels fast today. Right? But whether you're a student, whether you're at your, at your work, whether you're at your home talking to your family, a lot of times the news will reach the people that it affects sooner than you can reach the people it affects to explain it to them. Right? Well, that's what's happened here, is Peter has been with the Gentiles who all the Jewish people say we're not supposed to commune with, but God said go commune with them. And so Peter went not only just to commune with them, but to invite them into his family. And this is a pretty large deal. And God has shown Peter that this is okay, but he hasn't yet shown the rest of, of Peter's family that it's okay. And when Peter gets home, they're waiting for him. They're waiting for him. Yeah, and you can see that, right? You can imagine this. Just wait till Peter gets home. We know where he's been. We know what he's done. Just wait until he gets home. We're going to nail Big Mouth to the wall. Right? Because I'm sure Peter said some things that irritated people. We see that in four separate Gospels. That Peter probably said some things that irritated people. And so Peter gets back and it says, They were waiting on him. They had heard about it. And they stressed circumcision. Those who stressed circumcision argued with him. Because what happened was, the, well, see what happened was, the, the centurion... Cornelius, he believed in God, but he wasn't yet a full believer because he wasn't circumcised into that faith. And so he could attend some temple worship services, but he could not go to the temple until he was circumcised on sacrifice day. So he couldn't attend on very special days because he wasn't circumcised. And Cornelius and a lot of folks who believed in God said, I'll believe in God, but I'm too old to get circumcised. I ain't a baby anymore, Right? And he said, you know, we'll just leave that for another day. And then Peter comes in through what God shows him and says, Christ's sacrifice covered all. The need for circumcision no longer exists because what God has made pure, let no man call impure. And, and this you'll see this throughout the rest of the New Testament is there's this battle of, we say people need to be circumcised. And, and the Apostle Paul is a champion. Read the book of Galatians. Of No, circumcision is a matter of the heart, not a physical act, right? And so Peter comes back, and these guys are waiting, and they said, Peter, you were with people who were uncircumcised. And Peter says, just calm down, I've been with God. Now what we see here, now listen up, because this is practical, everyday stuff today. This is, how do I go about my Christian life stuff today? This is, when this happens, how do I do this stuff today? When you face conflict, when we face an ambush that is waiting for us, and in Peter's case, it was an ambush from other believers, you may face conflict with other believers. That's okay. We can talk through stuff. You may face conflict with non-believers. That's okay. We can talk through stuff. What we're going to see is how Peter handles that conflict. And I think a lot of times it's different than the way we handle conflict. And what Peter exemplifies for us in this through the work of the Holy Spirit is trust God to do what he said he would do. And if you trust God to do what he said he would do, then God is faithful and true. And if you trust God to do what he said he would do, you would just be honest and truthful about the work God is doing in your heart and the work you see God do in His Word. Now, that, that sounds simple, right? Well, of course I trust God. Of course I trust that He's going to do what He said do. Look what Peter does here. Check out what Peter does. So verse 2, when Peter went up to Jerusalem, those who stressed circumcision argued with him. When he came back home, they argued with him. You visited uncircumcised men and ate with them. Now Peter's got two options. He's got two options. He can go, he can go one of two ways. Well, he can go one of three ways. Right? So, so one way he can go is he can say, 
He can, he can blow up. Maybe you're a person who blows up when faced with confrontation. Because Peter could have said, God told me to do that, and you unbelievers don't know God as much as I know God. And let me tell you why you stink as believers. Right? And a lot of times we have a tendency to do that. When the world comes at us, or maybe not other believers come at us, and they say, why on earth would you do that? That's not Christian. A lot of times our response is, Let me show you. Let me show you what I did. Come on. And that's friendly fire. <laughs> we throw punches at our own brothers and sisters. And don't think the world don't see that. Don't think the world don't see that. And don't think that don't rip a church apart. We say, come at me. God told me what to do. You don't know nothing about it. And I'll just carry on like that. And maybe our form of, of punching is not to even talk about it. Just to stay in our own boat, do our own thing, because so I ain't going to talk to that person again. Or maybe our form of, of fighting is to say, is to say, we're going to have it out right here. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I'm right, and I'll tell you why you're wrong. Nope. That, that's one way Peter could have went. The other way Peter could have went is he could have just been submissive. And he could have said, you know, I, I was over there, and I, I felt like God said that, but you're, the more I think about it, the more you're right. God couldn't have meant that. He couldn't, God couldn't have really meant what he said. That was too extreme. And a lot of times we'll do that. When we're faced with confrontation, we'll cave on God's word. And we'll say, God's word can't be relevant now. That's Old Testament God. That's, that's Sodom and Gomorrah God. Not 2022 God. 2022 God's way nicer. Sodom and Gomorrah God was nice too. We'll, we'll talk about that. Or, or Peter could have done what he did. They said, they argued with him. They said, you visited uncircumcised men and ate with him. Peter began to explain to them in an orderly sequence. Peter began to tell them the truth. And we see Verse by verse lined out. He began to explain to them exactly what had happened. And he began to lay out for them the truth. When, when you're faced with confrontation, when we're faced with confrontation, first, do you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ? <coughs> if you do, then the outpouring of your heart in a loving, truthful way will be acceptable in that confrontation. So if, if you uh, and another believer, you and someone in church, you and someone outside of church, you and someone at your work, you and someone at your school, whatever, if, if there's a confrontation, you should be honest about what God has laid on your heart and speak in love. That's not what we do. Here, this is what I think we do. This, this is what I think we do. All right. So let's say... Let's say your grandma makes the best mashed potatoes on the planet. My, my grandma did make the best mashed potatoes. Sorry if, if you think you, your grandma did, but she didn't. Mine did. Right? So let's say your grandma makes the best mashed potatoes on the planet. And I mean it's your favorite food. Right? It's your favorite food. These are not my grandma's mashed potatoes. But for the sake of this discussion, they are. Alright? So let's say... Uh, that smells pretty good. Right? So let's say you got your grandma's mashed potatoes right. Right? And you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that they're the best mashed potatoes that have ever graced the face of the earth. And you know, even for people who don't like mashed potatoes, they would like your grandma's mashed potatoes. They don't even need gravy. <laughs> right? They don't even need butter. They're perfect like they are. And let's say, let's say you tell everybody, man, my grandma's mashed potatoes are great. You ought to try my grandma's mashed potatoes. But the world says, you know what we like? We like ice cream. Ice cream is our favorite thing. And so you start to think, maybe the world don't want mashed potatoes. Maybe the world wants ice cream. And if I could just somehow sneak my mashed potatoes into the world's ice cream, Maybe things will be okay. So, so this is what we do. We take grandma's mashed potatoes.
bring us mashed potatoes. Right? And we package them. We pour them out. Right? We take an ice cream container and we pour them out and we package them in ice cream. Uh-oh. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> and we put them in the freezer and we freeze it. Right? And then we say to the world, guess what I got? I got ice cream. And we take it and we take an ice cream scoop and we freeze it and we, we put it in a bowl and we tell the world check it out. Oh, man. <laughs> this, is, this is not beautiful. All that for one chair. And we say, we say, hey world, I know you didn't like my grandma's mashed potatoes, but maybe you would like my grandma's ice cream. And it's got chocolate syrup, and it's got cherry on top, and it's super good. And the world says, man, yeah, we love ice cream. Is we water it down a little bit. 
We water it down. And we say, it's not, it's not. I mean, it's good for me. It may not be good for you. It is good. It's, it's the answer that people are looking for. How could we not let somebody know that? How could we not be honest in love? Peter was faced with an ambush and immediately said, let me tell you what happened. This is what happened. And he trusted his experience with God. He trusted God's word to him. He trusted the spirit speaking through him. And what was the result at the end of that chapter, class? Do you remember? Then they glorified God. They, the, the church, they glorified God. Saying, so God has granted repentance even to the Gentiles. Because Peter was honest and he trusted God with what God entrusted to him. Here's, here's what I think keeps us from telling the truth to non-believers. This is what I think. I think it all boils down to how much you trust God. I think if we trusted God, we wouldn't hesitate to tell believers the answer that they're searching for. To tell non-believers the answer that they're searching for. If we would trust God. But a lot of times we think, well, I'm not adequate enough to share the gospel with somebody. I'm not qualified enough. To share the gospel with somebody. I would be willing to bet, and this is the case in my life, I would be willing to bet in your life, if, if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, the people that have had the biggest impact on your life never went to seminary, never studied deep theological studies, never stood in the pulpit. But they spent time with you. They shared life with you. And you saw Jesus working in them. And they shared Christ with you by just talking about how he moved in their lives. If you're here, if you're breathing, if you have life today, and you have a relationship with Christ, then you are qualified to tell the truth to someone. But you have to trust that Christ is enough in that. Back in the Old Testament, when there was a, when, when there was a, a sacrifice, right? The, the, the father of, of the household would go out when a lamb was sacrificed for the sins. He would go out and he would put his hand on that lamb's head throughout the sacrifice. And his contact with that lamb's head throughout the sacrifice would say to his family, this sacrifice is enough for my family. And as long as I keep contact with the lamb during this sacrifice, it's enough for my family. And essentially today, the lamb of God, if we keep our heart entrusted in him, if I essentially keep my hand on Christ, if I say every step of my life, all the days of my life, even the days I fall, even the days I stumble, especially the days I stumble, when I walk away, I'm still dependent on the Lamb of God. My hand is still on Him. I am still resting fully in the Lamb of God. And if, if, if I'm truthful about my life and the good and the bad and the mountaintops and the valleys and the in-betweens and the successes and the failures, but that it's not about me, it's about Christ, well then all of a sudden it's not about me being inadequate, is it? It's about Christ being adequate. You see the difference? I can, be, I can tell the truth. When faced with confrontation, I can just tell the truth because it's not about me or my ability. I trust in Christ, in His ability. But trust is hard. A admittedly, trust is hard. Because we would like to see the result 10 miles ahead. If, if I trust someone, I want to know a plan. I want to know a true and proper record. True, true, a true and proper record. 
Thanks. A proven track record. Right? So I, I, it takes me a while to, to build trust with somebody. To build love with somebody, like, like friendship. Yeah, okay. But trust, that comes over time. Right? And so, so we walk this walk together and we trust, right? And so that, that takes a little bit of time. And so we trust God. We say, well, God, I'd like to know how this is going to turn out. God, I'm praying for your will to be done on this. Show me where to go. And show me how it's going to turn out. A lot of times that's how we pray deep in our heart. You know what Psalm 119 says? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now, when the psalmist wrote that, what was his idea of a light or a lamp? What is, was it fluorescent bulbs? No, no, no. Was it a high-powered flashlight? No, no, no. Was, was it more like a candle? Maybe a few candles together? And when he took a step, how far ahead of him do you think he could see? Probably just a couple steps. His word is a light unto your path. And it may be that he says, look, we're not talking about ten steps ahead. We're talking about the next step. So if you'll step where I'm lighting you, where I'm leading you. Do you trust him today to be with you in confrontation, to be with you in whatever you've got coming? To be with you in the trouble that's coming your way. Do you trust him to the point where you can say like Peter, let me just tell you what happened. Or do you put up your defenses and say, nah. Or do you crawl in a ball and say, yeah. The truth is worth sharing. <laughs> Why would we get so excited about the truth? I, this, is, this is where we wrap up right here, all right? This is John chapter 14. Why would we get so excited about the truth? Man, this is pretty neat, okay? So, so the reason that you can trust God, because listen, here, here's where it's at, right? This, this, is, this is where we live, is we say, we say okay, God, well, I'll, I'll, I'll trust you in the things I can see, but it's a little harder to trust you in the things I cannot see. And, 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 and Lord, I'll, I'll trust you in ways that are easy, but Lord, it's, it's hard in, in life's discomfort. And when sickness comes, and when pain comes, and when people around me are falling, and, and when life stinks and the bills are piling up, and I ain't sure how we're going to pay the next one, and when, when my friends are talking about me, and, and I'm lonely, and I'm tired, I, I can't necessarily see you then. So how can I trust you then? When I feel like you're far away. Can we admit that? That there are times in our lives we just, we just we pray, Lord, I wish I could feel you and, and know you were here. But I feel a little lonely right now. Can your preacher admit that? I'll, I'll admit that. That, that there are times in my life, and I'm not talking about way back when I didn't know Jesus, I'm talking about now. That there are times in my life where I say, Lord, I, this is tough. How are we going to get through this? I need you to show up in a big way. I'm hurting you. Check out this problem. This is John chapter 14. Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples. He's about to go away for a little bit. These are the guys he's been with for three years. Fighting alongside, eating with, sharing meals, sharing life for three years. You remember... High school, your group of friends for four years. Maybe college, your group of friends for four years. And you remember at the end of high school, you'd write the annual, we're going to be friends forever. Because you felt that way. You were so tied to them. Maybe, maybe a lot of those folks, you are friends forever. But you were so tied to them. You're like, man, this is, my, this is my group. This is their group. They've been together for three years. This is their group. This is real. These are the guys who are tied. 
And Jesus is everything to them. And they don't understand everything yet, but they understand Jesus is everything. He is, he is life. And they don't even know how much life yet, but they know he's life. Because they've spent these years walking with him and seeing him heal people. And seeing him raise people from the dead. And seeing blind men gain, gain sight. And seeing people with leprosy heal. And they say, this is Jesus. As long as Jesus is here, we're going to be okay. And they place their trust in him. And they said, Jesus, as long as you're here with us, we've got this. We're, we're with because you're right here. And we'll walk wherever you walk. Peter says that. Lord, I won't deny you. Right? And they says, wherever you go, Lord, we'll go. We're right here because we're all in this together. 12 plus 1 to 13, that's us, man. We're with you, Jesus. If, if, if you'll just stay with us. And Jesus looks at him and he says this. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house are many rooms, are many dwelling places. If, if not, I would have told you. Now listen, I'm going away. I'm going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and receive to you myself so that where I am, you may also be. So, so this, is, this is a promise. I'm going away to prepare a place for you in my father's house or many rooms. This is a promise from the town movie. And, and they would have recognized this. And, and so, so the custom of that time would be if, if, you, if you betrothed someone, if you were engaged to someone, you met your future bride. You said, man, I, I love this lady. This is my heart. And you met that bride and you asked her to marry you. And she said yes. And remember or imagine that moment, your heart, how in love. You were or you are at that moment. And you said, will you marry me? And she says, yes. What, what the husband, the future husband, the future groom, what he would do, what he would, he would say, okay, wait right here. Wait right here. I'm going to go to my father's house and I'm going to build us a dwelling place on the back of that house for you and I to stay. Because, because what they would do is they would say, my, my father has a house and, and we're going to be part of that family. And so, so the custom of that time would be we're going to build an abode, we're going to build a house on the back of his house. We're going to build, we're going to build a room for us. And it's going to be special and I'm going to build it just for you. And so little wifey, you wait right here because I'm coming back. But I'm going to get a place for us to stay. I'm going to build a place for us to stay. And you better believe, you better believe as soon as I'm finished, I'm coming right back here to you. Do you remember? You remember your heart. Your wife. Your, oh. you, there's nothing that can keep you away. Because you're so in love. If somebody can try to talk to you about it, but she's the one, she's the one. Right? She's the one, HP. Yeah. And so we would say, man, I'm coming back. I'm coming back for you. And nothing can keep me away. But I, I just got to go. I'm going to prepare for us a place. And it's going to be special. I'm going to build it with my own hands. And so what he would do, when he would go to his father's house, he would build that home. And as soon as he was done, he would come back for that bride. And you better believe he would come back for that bride. And the disciples all knew what he was talking about because they were familiar with the town. We have been over this here, how they were familiar with the whole Old Testament and all the teachings and all that jazz. And they recognized the speech that he was saying, that he was saying, man, I love you like a husband loves his bride. I love you like, like a groom loves his bride, like two people engaged. And I won't leave you alone. I'm going to prepare somewhere special for us. Now, look, if we get that, if we say in our hearts, man, he has not left me alone. I, I may not feel him at this moment, but guess what, church? Your faith is not about your feels all the time. You can feel up. 
and you can feel down, and God is with you and up, and God is with you and down. And it can just be an average ordinary day, and God is with you in average ordinary. Because your faith is not based on your feels. You understand? So you may be really happy. And you may be saying, God is with me today. And you can be really broken. And you say, God is with me today. So on those moments where you feel alone, and you're allowed to feel that way. That's okay. On those moments you feel alone, just know he has not forgotten you. He will not forget you. Because you are his and he is yours. And man, he's coming back for you. And in the meantime, the Holy Spirit connects you with him and you get to walk in, you, in him and with him daily. Now, if we trust him in Jesus Christ with all our lives to not forget us, wouldn't we want other people to know that? And why would we compromise the truth of that? And so when we're faced with confrontation and we're faced with somebody who doesn't believe and wants to argue, we like Peter, calmly, in love, rationally, lay out the truth that he's done in our lives. If we're in a confrontation with another believer, why would we let that go? We calmly, rationally, in love, lay out that truth with that other believer because we trust that God will handle that situation. And so this is simply all about trust. Trust in the truth that he has given us in times of trouble. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are good to us when we know it and when we don't know it. You are good to us. Lord, don't let us water down the truth. Don't let us hide the truth. But let us live in the truth. Let us be set free by the fact that you are the truth and the way and the life. And so if we know you, then we know the truth. Lord, if our hearts are washed in you, then our hearts are washed in the truth. And we simply ask today for the courage to live that out. Hold tight to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, we are going to sing Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And that is 462 in your hymnal or it's on the screen. The altar's open for whatever you want to talk to God about. Always. And at the time in your pew also, if you just need to talk to Him. Whether that's through laying your heart out and singing or whether that's taking a break from singing and just praying. Don't let that moment pass you by. Talk to Him. Alright, let's stand and sing. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus.
Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, that You would bless us with the grace to trust You more. That You would open our eyes and our hearts and our minds to the work that You have set before us and maybe to the work that needs to be done in our own hearts. To trust You in that. You are our good God and Heavenly Father. In Your name we pray. Amen. Amen.